Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway. It's a good day today because I'm going back up onto the O-Gage layout with another O-Gage review. And not just another O-Gage review, as you just saw, this is an O-Gage diesel review, which I don't believe I've ever done before. So that's an extra level of excitement added on to this. So the loco of today's video is, of course, this. It is the classic 08 shunter. Heard so much about these by Dapol, of course. Now, these have quite a high RRP, £225, which is the same as the 14XX, and the 1400 was absolutely fantastic. It's £50 more than the Sentinel, so it is an expensive one. Hattons have these available for £191, so if you're interested, check them out down there. But yeah, what is this going to be like? I believe it's one of Dapol's older O-Gage locomotives. I've actually seen one before. My friend Dan, hello Dan, uh, brought one over to show me once. Uh, so I do have a few vague memories of what these are like, but this is certainly the first time I've owned one and actually been allowed to take it out of the box myself. So let's do this. Hopefully it goes well. Let's find out what this is like. Here we go then, and by the way, loving these O-Gage videos, they are so much fun, I really enjoy these. So this is a Class 08 diesel electric locomotive, as shown by the front of the box. For the longest time, I didn't realise these were diesel electrics, I always assumed they were quite primitive machines, purely diesel driven, etc. But no, they're not, they're a little bit more complex than that. Let me show the end of the box then, so you can see exactly the version I have here. So this is 7D-008-008, that's nice and neat, isn't it? Uh, it's a Class 08 D3305 in the BR Green Early Crest Wasp Stripes. So it's very, very similar to the double O gauge version of the 08 that I have from Backman. And I guess that's quite good. It, will, it might make for some comparisons, although probably not today. We'll do it a different day. If you want to, let me know in the comments if you do. Right, so not an awful lot else to see on the box, which means we can get into this and find out what this is like. Had this for a little while, and it's been quite difficult not to just go into this box and find out early, but no, luckily I have been able to resist. Okay, Dapol O-Gage Class 08 Locomotive Owner's Guide. So first use fitting detail parts, uh, all lighting, oh that's quite interesting. So that might be why it's a little bit more costly. There are lights on this. Uh, decoder installation maintenance, yeah, that is definitely going to be worth a read. Nothing on the back of that one. And I'm guessing this is gonna be the quibble, or no quibble rather, <laughs> the no quibble. 24 month warranty yes a warranty that does involve quibbling probably isn't something you'd want to advertise is it but no the warranty is very very good but hopefully i won't have to make use of it okay so we have a little accessory bag here which appears to be just like a, a speaker housing by the looks of it uh, with some screws and there are also some i'm going to make a guess and say those are windscreen wiper blades for the cab maybe um, are they spares are they not fitted to the model as standard i guess we will find out anyway all right so it's it's foam oh god does this mean i've got to pull it out of a, a foam enclosure yes it does oh blimey oh, i don't like that because i'm clumsy you see that's the problem but wow look at this when i think 08 shunter i think a little thing like this this is not what I'm used to on the subject of 08 shunters. And look at that, that is absolutely phenomenal. Already, already I can see some great things. The decoration looks great. I can see that the door's open, look at that. So we do have a poseable door, that's great. Nice chunky coupling rods, look at that. Man, this is gonna be epic. Uh, and also, maybe I can grab onto it with these uh, plastic bits. The foam enclosure was coming to start with and that frightened me, but no, that's, that's fine. Right. Is there anything else in the box? I just want to double check that I haven't missed anything because that would be embarrassing. I don't believe there is. Uh, no, ooh. Well, there's something that isn't supposed to be here. It looks like a little spring. Where has that come from? I don't know. Anyway, right, let's have a look at this then. Is it particularly weighty? I'll tell you what, yes. <laughs> What's this thing here? Oh, that's a buffer. So there's a buffer off it as well. How does that go back on? Well, that's not very good. So I'm putting the buffer back in and it is sort of staying there, but I'm not sure how to attach it properly so that it still springs. So that's not great. Anyway, 
and I can feel some metal on my hands as I'm holding this. It appears that the running plate here is made of metal and that's great. Uh, the body otherwise, yeah, it does feel a little bit on the plasticky side, it must be said, um, obviously because it's plastic, I guess. But generally speaking, I would say the weight is pretty good. It's clear that the level of detail is going to be nothing short of impressive, and I can't wait to have a closer look at this. But let's have some history on the prototype. While I give you that, I will weigh this and have a close look myself, and then I will feed back. Wow, this is exciting stuff. Let's get started. So the 08 was a very early but very numerous class of British diesel shunter, introduced for the first time in 1952. 996 examples were built over a 10 year period and they were loosely based on the LMS 12033 design and they also looked very similar to those but of course they were considerably updated with English electric six cylinder engines and dual motors from the same builder. Variations in the design meant that different motors were used in different engines, some were designed for higher voltages than others but most were only capable of reaching a maximum speed of around 15 miles per hour while some could stretch to 20. For many years, the 08s could be seen at countless stations and freight yards, and even to this day, roughly 100 either remain in preservation or on industrial premises. And one thing I do quite like about these is that among the preserved examples is the very first example, which is number 13000, I think it is, or 13046. I think they're one and the same, just different running numbers from different periods. Very nice. Let's have a close look. It is a pity about this one because it really does look great, doesn't it? But alas, there are quite a few defects on this one which are a little bit, well, let's say unexpected given the price tag. Some of these defects, I believe, were caused by the packaging, which yet again was poor. This loco is far too detailed to just be crammed into a foam tray like that. I think that's what's done the buffer in, which, by the way, now refuses to spring. And incidentally, every single buffer on the model has some sort of defect. So this one is covered in glue, as you can see. It's just a gluey mess. This one's got a big black mark on it. I don't know what that is. The one that has the broken buffer has paint chipped off it. It looks pretty bad. And this is the sole buffer on the model that actually is, well, no, no, actually, no, there, are, there is glue all over the housing of it. So, yeah, literally all of the buffers are buggered, basically. And there's this sort of weird marking on the side, which I have tried to rub off, but it isn't coming off. Again, I think the packaging's done that. There's this odd sort of oblong foam piece which slots into the packaging, and that marking there is just underneath where that goes. So I think, again, that's been done by the packaging. And then you've got the general flimsiness of some aspects of the model. So you've got these plastic steps, which, as you can see, are very wobbly. Not too keen on that. This pipe, I don't know why this, pi this pipe's not connected to anything. Look, there's not even a hole for it to go into. So I don't know whether that's broken or just badly designed. But either way, it's not particularly good. And as you can see, these separately fitted pieces are all wonky as well. So, yeah, the quality is perhaps not quite what I was expecting it to be, given the price. But I wouldn't go as far as to say that this is a bad or clumsy model overall, because some aspects of it are really quite impressive. Let's talk about the decoration then, which is done to a very, very high standard. So you've got the lovely early British Railways crest there, which is a nice tampo print, high resolution, which is good. You've got the high voltage warning signs, which are also nicely done. Running number on the side of the cab, that is absolutely fine. The most impressive aspect of the decoration, though, is by far the wasp stripes. Look at this. These are so neat and tidy. They're a real joy to look at, actually. Very, very nicely done. No paint bleed whatsoever, and that goes for the front as well. And just look at the sort of radiator grill on the front there. Absolutely phenomenal. The size of O-gauge means that they've really gone to town with this. And you can really see behind the outer grilling, can't you? It really is a nicely detailed piece. Let's take a look at some other aspects of the model then. We'll start around the cab, I guess. As you will see, we have really nicely glazed cab windows. They are very good quality. And you do indeed have the opening and closing cab doors, which does afford you a reasonable view inside the cab, which is okay. There isn't very much painted detail inside there. There are a few controls, but the gauges and such are just left blank. But yeah, overall, I think the cab does what it needs to, and I do like the opening doors. And you also have the air intake on the top for the crew, which also opens and closes and that I really do like as well. The 08s famously had steam whistles, I believe, and here's the Dapol version. It is plastic, which is a bit unfortunate because obviously that does look it, doesn't it? It doesn't look particularly metallic, which is again a bit unfortunate given the price. Come on, 200 quid. I reckon they could be a bit less stingy on things like that. Let's take a look at some more of the details though. So we have the lamps here, which I believe will work. I mean, the instructions said we have lighting, which is great. And the lamps also have the sort of separately fitted wiring going to them as well, which I think looks fantastic. 
The buffer beams are nicely done, besides the buffers themselves, of course. Lots of riveting on the buffer beams, as well as the vacuum pipes, which are pre-fitted, and the screw link couplings, which don't screw or anything like that. But they haven't fallen apart yet either, which I think should be applauded. The sides of the model are nicely detailed as well. I believe these grills here are etched. They do look like they're separately fitted, which is really nice, and the texture on them is quite impressive. And all of the little handrails and or handles on the various opening compartments, those are all separately fitted as well, which is great to see. The underframe is nicely detailed as well. Again, quite a few separately fitted parts just underneath the running plate, which I reiterate is made of metal. That's very, very good. You've got lots of molded detail around the wheel set and such. You've got all the suspension springs molded on there, nice axle boxes. And then the coupling rods, of course, which are painted red, not manufactured to the highest standard. You do have a bit of paint missing here and there, and there's this ugly mess just here. Not entirely sure what's going on there. But I suppose if you were going to weather this, then little defects like that might work to your advantage. But if you've bought a pristine model, it really should be pristine, shouldn't it? Around the front, you've got more separately fitted lamp irons. Well, they look like they're separately fitted, as well as more electric lamps. Can't wait to see if those work. I'm sure they're going to, but it will be really nice to see for sure, won't it? And along the roof, you can see we do have some nice molded detail, including the exhaust. And apparently this section here of the roof is removable so that you can chip this with DCC. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to try that. I can see myself breaking it. But the instructions do cover how to remove the body as well. So I think I'll just do that on the mechanism section to show you what's inside. So with that, I think we will do exactly that. I will show you the insides of this thing. We'll talk a little bit about the mechanism, find out what makes this thing tick. And then, of course, give it its first ever run and see how it performs. Overall, the level of detail is really, really good. I do just think the quality leaves a little bit to be desired in a couple of areas, which is unfortunate because that's really not very often the case with Dapol's O-Gage stuff. Like I say, though, this is one of their older O-Gage models. Their more recent stuff has been a lot better than this, that's for sure. Level of detail, as I say, though, very, very, very good. Okay, mechanism. All right, so there it is, Dapol's beautiful 08 shunter onto the O-Gage layout and ready for its first ever test. Now let's talk about mechanism as promised. When I first lifted this out of the box, I thought, yeah, it seems reasonably weighty. I would never have guessed though that this would be my heaviest O-Gage Loco by a considerable margin because it weighs in at 865 grams. That is nearly a kilogram. I think the next heaviest was the 14XX and that was 600 and something grams. So this is my heaviest O-Gage Loco by a long way. It really didn't seem that heavy, but it is. So that is fantastic. The mechanism seems to be just as good as on Dapol's other offerings as well. So removing the base keeper plate reveals these massive chunky bearings. I really like those. Good surface area on those, so the wear and tear should be absolutely minimal. I decided in the end not to remove the loco body because there were details that would have to be removed or bent out of the way in order to do that. So I settled with just removing the top, which reveals the nice circuit board inside where the 21-pin DCC socket is located. And you can't see it very well, unfortunately, but you can just about get a glimpse of the motor underneath there which has a nice big flywheel fitted to it. The mechanism is just as good as on Dapol's other O-Gage Locos and that means really really good. <laughs> so let's do the first ever test then. Uh, it has not yet been run in as always that's the usual disclaimer so it should get better as it goes. I'm a bit worried about the weight actually. Um, I'll have to put it on the inside line eventually because it's a little bit dodgy isn't it? But no I've tested each shelf with five kilograms and they are fine so I know it's not going to give way. Anyway, I shouldn't have said that. You're all going to be fretting about that now, aren't you? Anyway, here we go then. Let's give it a little juice. We're now on Gauge Master, so this should be even better than before, I think. Here we go. Okay, it's moving. <laughs> it sounds like a leopard has just entered the room. It's got a purr to it. Yes, that's an interesting noise. Are they trying to be realistic with that? It is very, very smooth, jokes aside. I don't know if you can hear it. I don't know whether to be concerned. Sounds a bit flatulent, doesn't it, almost? But that's, oh, that's even getting better already. Yeah, I think I'll have to run this in before I pass any judgment on that. Uh, but, there we are, that's 50% speed. Seems a little bit on the speedy side. Does it? No, perhaps not. Perhaps that is about right, actually. All right, how's the crawl straight out of the box then? Let's find out. Let's go backwards to start with. Oh, wow. Um, okay, 
So at the moment, that's as slow as it can go. And I would say we've seen better than that. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a lot to move here. 800 grams, more than 800. Um, yeah, I mean, that's okay. I would say that's adequate. We've certainly seen better crawlers from Dapol in O-Gage. Uh, if I remember correctly, the Terrier wasn't much of a crawler either. Um, yeah, the Sentinel, the 14XX, the later offerings have definitely been better crawlers than that. But again, I'm not going to say that that is my final judgment until this has been run in. So let's send it up the way then, shall we? Let's get it going. It's a bit more of a speed. Let it stretch its legs a little bit. There it goes. Go right up to the buffer stop, shall we? Then we'll bring it back again and we'll try it on the points and then we'll get it onto the outside line, onto the shuttle system where I can run it in properly and also film it remotely, which should be good. Okay, we're almost there. There we are. Ooh bang on the buffer stop there and of course we don't have proper working buffers on this at least one of them isn't right so that's unfortunate coming back you can see the light is working and it's nice and bright i like that that is nice sometimes i mean if this was going to be totally realistic maybe the light wouldn't need to be as bright as that but actually i do like a bright light because otherwise you don't notice it do you yeah that's really really nice there is also evidence of a light on inside the cab, but that one isn't particularly bright, so you really can't notice that. Right, let's try it on the points then, shall we? Here we go, the points are open already. I just don't 100% know how I've wired up these controllers to work, so we shall have to see. There we are, that was all right. Yeah, I would say that is a success. It handles points very, very nicely. And with that, I'm going to engage my shuttle unit. Okay, and then we'll send it forwards. So I need to change direction to forwards and engage the shuttle. Any second now. Oh, made me jump. <laughs> Oops, just get around the beam, then we'll get you back in focus. All right, so it's a nice runner. It seems to be getting better and better. It is rather near the roof. It's quite a boxy design, I suppose, isn't it? But I think it should be fine. Hopefully it manages the curve all right. Yeah, I think we're okay on there. That seemed to be pretty much fine. There it goes. Yeah, oh, it's a bit dark here. But that is very much a nice runner. That is stretching its legs very, very nicely. Here we are, grinds to a halt at the other end. Ready to start again in the other direction. It goes tight curve this. No problems though. Excellent. So off it goes. Very, very nice. And I will come back to you guys in just an hour or so, 45 minutes, whatever, after it's had a good chance to run in and then we'll try it again. Okay folks, we are back and the shuttle system did me well there. I didn't have to worry about running the loco in at all. It just kind of went automatically. As you can see, I have six wagons set up. This is probably the biggest train I've ever put together, including of course the Hatton's Warwell, onto which I've gingerly loaded the Bankman 08 shunter, just because that's kind of a bit of a theme, isn't it? If I've got a smaller scale model of the same loco. So with that, let's reverse the 08 up, couple to the train and see how it gets on. I think it's going to come now anyway, so I better get to work. Okay, steadily does it, slowed us down a little bit, and I'll need to swap controller. Oh, no, wrong way, bear with, there we are. And let's meet the train, shall we? Okay, just get it nice and close if possible. Okay, and now you guys go and amuse yourself for 20 minutes while I get it coupled, and I'll be back shortly, or not shortly, as is usually the case. 
Right, well that actually was reasonably shortly. So with that, let's change the direction again. Oops, no, I must have changed it twice, never mind. Here we go, let's try the train over the points. Ooh, bad feeling about that. Well, seems okay so far. So I hope. <laughs> yeah, tempted fate there, didn't I? Damn. Well, I guess it was the coupling. Well, I used the coupling on the red box van, so I guess we've uh, we've left the double O gauge O H hunter behind, which I suppose we have in a way. It's quite fitting, isn't it? Never mind. There we go. Let's get this recoupled. Right, so now I've got to really give it some to get that wall well over the points. So what I might do is just back us up a touch and then I can go to 70% speed. Might knock everything off the track, but we'll see. And yes, because of the hefty flywheel, the wall well has now cleared the points, which means that I can change them. Okay, let's re-engage that shuttle system and have a bit of a ride with the good strain. Okay, so I've got to set it slow now because the shuttle system must kick in before it reaches the other end and the war well crashes into the wall. So now we'll just wait for it to start. And there it goes. Wow. You know, this is actually quite a considerably sized train. I mean, I know that's nonsense in railway talk, but compared with what I'm used to, <laughs> these trains are growing in length. Now, a lot of people have been saying a brake van is desperately required, and I agree. Uh, maybe, I mean, you guys let me know in the comments. If you don't want to see a brake van, that's fine. But maybe a brake van should be the next item of rolling stock I try in O-Gage. Dapol themselves make some, I believe. Uh, so maybe that will be worth doing. Maybe it will. But if you just forget the fact that we don't have a brake van, I think this rather looks good, don't you? It's all working nicely round the curve, no problems at all. Oh, <laughs> perhaps not. Yeah, might have tempted fate with that. Yes, unfortunately my red van here is missing a buffer. Um, I don't know whether that would be the reason for that, but mm, maybe. Right, I've done away with the red van now because uh, it's missing buffer was causing it to lock up. Uh, I don't think it will be a problem. I think if I can find a sort of spare buffer for it, it will be okay. So not too concerned. But apart from that, everything else is working really nicely. So let's have some ratings then for Dapol's very impressive overall O8 shunter. The level of detail then, I've given 4.5 stars, very, very nearly given this a five star. Yeah, basically the level of detail was really, really good. I like the extra grills, they're fantastic. The opening cab doors, very, very impressive. The buffers were sprung, even though they were a bit defective, but they were sprung, so it gets points for that. Uh, separately fitted handrails, I love the lights. I just think the cab detail might have been a little bit better, you know, if we had the proper painted gauges and just a little bit more detail inside there I think I'd be willing to give this a five star again I'm just thinking about that 14xx cab can I really give this five star when it doesn't have a cab quite that good no I don't think so the performance then I've also given four star it is very very nice and smooth and after running in the sound is much better it's much quieter I would say however the crawl still isn't absolutely top notch it's very good don't get me wrong I don't think it's going to detract much from the model but we do have other O-Gage Locos in Dapol's range that run slightly better and slightly slower than this does. But it's by no means a big criticism at all, but I think just enough to knock one star off. Well, I've, I've knocked a star off in the past for that, so I have to be consistent. The pulling power is just insane. I've given it the top marks possible for this. So it could, it's got an attractive effort of 1.6 Newtons, which is more than double the last most powerful O-Gage Loco I have, which I think was the Terrier at 0. 0.7 Newton, something like that. It's more than double, it's insane. That's enough for around 20 coaches. Now, I don't have any means to test the number of coaches in O-Gage, by the way, so that's just a very, very rough estimate. But yeah, very, very powerful indeed, love that. The mechanism also is very, very good. I've given it five stars. It's got the proper metal bearings on the wheel set. It's nice and serviceable. That base keeper plate comes off without any pickups in the way or anything like that. It appears we've got a really nice chunky motor inside there and we have a flywheel on board as well. Plenty of space for a DCC decoder 
but it really is fantastic. Really, really like the mechanism. Can't fault it, and when you can't fault it, you give something five stars. That's what you do. The quality, mm, yeah, there's more room for faulting the quality, I would say. But we'll start positive. So on the plus side, it is very, very heavy. It weighs in at 865 grams, which is the heaviest Dapol O-Gauge Loco I've ever measured, so that's very good. Uh, it's also got the metal running plate, which I like very much, and the decoration is very, very well done as well. High quality decoration. I didn't like the packaging though, again the packaging was inadequate for protecting the model properly which is a big no-no. The body is quite plasticky as well, particularly when you're lifting it up it does flex. It just feels a bit plasticky in the hands, I couldn't help but notice that. We've got the glue marks which were very very obvious and evident on the buffers and such and we have a small amount of damage on the buffers and on some other parts that were not fitted properly. So I had to knock marks off for quite a few of those issues which is a shame because generally the quality of the model isn't too bad. It's not shoddy by any means, it just had one or two small things which add up to make quite a big detraction on quality so do bear that in mind if you're thinking of buying one. Value for money, £225 is the RRP and these are available from Hattons for £191. Maybe I've been a bit generous here in giving it four stars but I think that is reasonable. The Sentinel though was £50 cheaper and it did run better and have a slightly better level of detail as well as the quality being slightly better as well so that's food for thought. It's also the same price as the 14XX which I think just about had a slightly better level of detail as well. So bear that in mind. Overall though that is a very good score, very reasonable I think of 8 points. 0.13 out of 10. Let's put that into the rankings. It is 18th just above the Hornby Rocket and below the Bankman E1. Overall, very, very pleased with this. I think it's a beauty. Very, very much so. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that was a bit scary, wasn't it? So it might not be as perfect as some of the other O-Gage Locos I've looked at, but it's still got a bit of that O-Gage magic about it, hasn't it? It works incredibly well. It's very, very, very powerful. So if you want, you know, if you want to start O-Gage perhaps with a really powerful Loco, the O8 here is a really, really good option. <laughs> very powerful. I'd love to get some more. In fact, when I decide I want to start some bigger trains and when I've got the means to run bigger trains, this loco is going to be my first port of call. Absolutely. Well, there we are then, folks. That is another O-Gage review done and dusted, and I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. And it is a good loco. I'm not saying it's bad by any means. It's just I think Dapol's other stuff is so good that uh, it beats this, basically. However, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your company, and I will see you very, very soon for some more videos. All right. Cheers, everybody. Take care.